Well, let's take a bold step and ask you before we look at the preview of Morocco versus Croatia. It's um, very, very difficult. If there's any factor a lot of people want Argentina to win, it's a messy factor. Be, be, beyond that, who do you think will win the day? Yes, I, I think I am, one, I am one of those who also wish that uh, Argentina wished, uh, win the World Cup, you know, because of Messi. And uh, beyond, beyond emotions and sentiment, I think on the balance of the quality that are available to the two teams, I, I think uh, Argentina has the, the capability to also merit to win the World Cup, you know. But like I said, football is like a biscuit. You cannot really predict. It depends on what you bring on, on the field of play during that period in time. You watch, your, result, your result yesterday is not important. What is important is the 90 minutes, you know. Um, as uh, one of our uh, 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 football analysts, I think uh, the best team should win. Mm. And I also pray that the best team will win as well. But if you want to ask me for sentiment, for emotion, uh, I think it will be a thing of uh, uh, joy if uh, Messi will cap his uh, last appearance at the World Cup with a triumph. So, but for me, it's it's not that here or there, which is um, what will happen in 90 minutes or beyond, or you might even eventually go to the game of luck, you know, penalty shoot touch and everybody, it's everybody's game. But if you ask me for the, for the sake of mercy, I will wish that he, his team triumph. Lastly, let's look at um, today's game against uh, Morocco and Croatia. Uh, I'm sure we you, we analysed that yesterday, but obviously in some hours' time, we'll be seeing the first Africa playing in the World Cup um, um, third place match, and that will probably be that's historical, and we will be having perhaps um, the first Africa to win a medal at the World Cup since inception of the World Cup in the 50s. So um, let's see what you pans out um, tomorrow. What's your stake on today's game between Morocco and Croatia? <laughs> Uh, again, like I said yesterday, because of the injuries that uh, have really affected uh, the Moroccans, you know, I tend to say that uh, the the game will probably go the way of the Croatians. But bearing that, if we have a, if the Moroccans, if all the injured people are able to recover on time and we have them there, I think uh, we have a good game on our hands and. Uh, it can either it can either go uh, either way. Uh, like I said yesterday, the two teams are very very disciplined, you know. And they said that uh, to win a tournament, you have to have a very good defense. Um, the two teams as exemplified that that uh, um, defense win tournament, and uh, they are almost uh, winning the, the tournament if not for the last uh, order that they couldn't overcome at the semi-final. But um, so far, so good. I think they have shown that uh, if you have a good organization, good defense, and uh, uh, there is that likelihood that you are going to win. And the two teams, have, like I said, they have shown that. So we will, we will just sit back and uh, see what will happen. But um, again, as an African, I will wish that uh, Morocco will win. And uh, it's my prayer that they will do win. But if we are looking at it uh, without sentiment and uh, based on the quality of players that are available or based on players that are available, I think uh, the Croatians uh, have it. Don't forget that uh, the powerhouse of the Croatians have been their midfield. If you look at their midfield, you know, they have Kosovic and uh, um, Brusovic and uh, the ever ageless uh, 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 Modric, you know. And, uh, it is a joy to have that kind of three midfielders, you know. They hold on to the ball, they keep possession. Even when they when they lost against Argentina, they were bossing they were bossing the, the, the midfield. So for me it's good, that's gonna be very key. Uh, and I think if if Morocco can neutralize the, the midfield, uh, it's the, the, the job is halfway done. But I pray as an African that Morocco will win. I wish that they win. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to be rooting for them today.
Okay, definitely all Africans are waiting, and not just all Africans, all Arabs, perhaps because we know that um, the Moroccan <laughs> side have a very strong alia, um, strong ties with the Arab world. Yes. And um, so it's now between the Africans routine and the Arabs routine for, for Morocco. And um, with this, it's noted that uh, perhaps the biggest footballing nation in Africa as the North Africans. Uh, the last two editions, um, apart from the last edition, the um, one before Senegal won, we had um, Algeria winning um, the Nations Cup. And when it comes to continental football, it's mostly the African, um, the North Africans that hold a so when it comes to continental CAF Champions League and CAF Confederation Cup. I just want your opinion. Um, what do you think the North Africans are doing in terms of sports um, that's making them ahead of um, other African teams, other um, section of um, the African that's ahead of the West African or the South Africans, the Mokons, even beyond um, um, football, in table tennis, in swimming, we have so much of the Egyptians and all that. Uh, uh, what do you think the North Africans are doing in terms of sport that are ahead of the other sectors of Africa? First of all, I'd like to differ a little bit, you know, on what you said in terms of uh, um, the performance of African teams at the World Cup. And prior to the to this year's edition of the World Cup, you know, all the previous teams that have gone beyond the second round in, in the World Cup has always been uh, African teams, or if you want to say Central Cameroon, you understand? We, we had, prior to now, we had about uh, four African nations, Nigeria, Senegal, uh, Cameroon, that has, Senegal did it twice, you know, that has gone beyond, Ghana, Ghana, that has gone beyond uh, the second round. And all of them have been Africa, West Africa team, you understand? So it's just only this edition that we have uh, uh, Morocco that has um, um, gone beyond the second round and reached the semi-final, you know. But having said that, I think it's not the, if the question is why do they tend to do well? Well, the simple question, if you want me to just answer simply, <laughs> that uh, maybe because they are nearer, they are nearer Europe than the, the rest of Africa countries, you know. But uh, um, um, jokes apart now, you know, I think what is going for them is their league. You know, they have very quality leagues. You know, most of their quality players do not go abroad, except, you know, when they go abroad, they go into Europe or, or thereabouts. They do it, they, so they have the best of the, the, the their players play, playing their trade at home. Because the league there are well organized. Hmm. Compared to you know, uh, some more, uh, Africa, other African countries where the leagues are poorly organized, you know, it is neither squabble for this or that, you know. So for me, the organization that the league that they brought about in has manifested in their league is, is a very uh, key factor. Again, uh, the sponsorship of their league, you know, the sponsorship that uh, that comes with their leagues is also a key factor. Here in Nigeria, the leagues is, is not even watched on the on the TV, you know. I remember when I was growing up, I I I, I used to support me Nigeria Bank, you know. Okay. Uh, you know, Nigeria <laughs> Bank is, was based in Bini, and uh, each time I I, I try to monitor uh, New Nigeria Bank, you know, using my grandma's uh, transitory radio, I have to tune in to monitor it. I was being I was not forced. It hmm. was because of the love that I have for New Nigeria Bank that I followed in Nigeria Bank, you know. And in those days, I could remember I followed the Keshi, the late Stephen Keshi, Ozogula, Humphrey Debo, you know. Those are players that are playing that, that trade there. Yeah. And their quality, most of them, you know, I remember in those days, uh, a, a large chunk of uh, NMP players forms the nucleus of the national team. This is why it goes. But where are we today? The league is not interesting. We don't go to watch the league. I remember when I was going on again, I used to go and watch the league, uh, stationary stores at uh, uh, UAC, yes, this present uh, Teslim Balogun Stadium. Okay. And only Con Stadium, you know. Nobody forced me to do that. I, I was doing that out of the will, out of the love that I have for it, you know. And But now, 
the league is not that interesting. We do. If you ask me, which team is even flying uh, the flag of uh, Lagos State in the uh, NPF? I, I would tell. I would not know. I would not know. And that's that's the honest truth because the organization has been poor. So if if the organization is poor, how would quality players come from that? You know. So for me, it is because of their organization and their league. That's why the most of more more often than not they tend to do well. Even in Africa, let's even not not extend it beyond Africa. In Africa, in the Champions League, they are the one that uh, usually triumph at the end of the season. But they are not average. This is not that it is if if it is not that either the Egyptians it's not going to be the Algerians or the Moroccans. Yes, sir. their team that will triumph. So it is the organization. This is how they have organized that league. Then the management, you know. People do not, they put interest beyond personal interest. They put the national interest beyond personal personal interest. And that's, that has explained why they have been successful as well. Well, well, well said, and, and, and I confirm to all what you said because, you know, articles and reports we see online from um, confirmed source of um, uh, media houses actually said the same thing in regards to the two sides. Uh, I, I don't want you to, to be on... So, yeah, definitely you won't have to be on um, on the defense right now being neutral um, <laughs> in the prediction of um, who is going to win um, today's game between um, Morocco and um, Croatia um, what's your prediction for today's game uh, well my prediction is that uh, Croatia will win but if you want me to predict the score I might say one nil okay uh, okay so, so my, uh, but I, 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 I pray that uh, my prediction will fail so that Morocco can win okay. if, uh, because of uh, the fact that I'm an African. Okay. But if you want me to be very honest, okay. I think uh, the Croatian will win. Okay. One year. Okay. Yeah, Tom, thank you very much. Don't forget, you preview these games for us. Definitely, obviously, there won't be another other better person that is going to give us a review of the matches today and tomorrow and tell us why it went the way it went, um, perhaps in favor of your mm -hmm. analysis or against your analysis. So just keep your time and let's not forget that you also come back in the studio in a few days time to tell us what happened at the, f uh, at the top place match between Croatia mm -hmm. and the Morocco and the final between um, Argentina and France. So just keep it deep with us some few days time. Thank you very much for being part of today's show. Thank you, Muda. Like I said, it's, uh, it's always been an honor for me to accept this invitation. I, 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 I'm quite honored. Thank you so much. I look forward to it as well. Thank you very much. Yes, um, we've been speaking um, with um, the general manager of Radio Lagos Equal Firm, talking about um, Olaji de Lawa, who he has spent his life on um, so much um, football and other sports, and um, he is a very, very um, veteran broadcaster. <laughs>